Hi there, I'm Trish from Trish Newbury Design and welcome to the NOLA hat, the bucket hat sew along. This hat is reversible, you can sew it in just one fabric if you prefer. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do both versions of them. Um, the fabrics you need, it's a good idea to keep with natural fabric, so I'm sewing this version in a linen. This linen is a very light linen, this linen is a heavier linen. You're going to need fuse, so choose fuse, fusible interfacing that your um, haberdashery shop recommends is appropriate for your fabric. Now saying that, you can fuse just one side, you can fuse both sides. It really depends on how much structure you want for this hat. In addition to that, if you're using lighter fabrics, you'll need heavier fuse. Um, you might get away with no fuse if you're going to use something like a canvas or a cotton duck or something like that, or a duck, I mean. Um, the other thing is if you want this to be really rigid, what you can do is also, um, instead of your fuse, or as well as your fuse, pop a layer of, I call it buckram, I think it is also called crinoline fabric. It is a really heavy sew-in interfacing and that will add extra structure to this. So before you get started, make sure you fuse all your pieces correctly. So that's heat, pressure and time with your iron and no steam, never use steam when you're applying fuse. When we sew this, we're going to sew with one centimeter, three eighths of an inch um, seam allowances, and you're only going to be sewing this with a plain sewing machine today, so you'll just need a straight stitch. So uh, let's go ahead, fuse all our pieces, and we can get started. Let's start with the band. Take the two band pieces that are the same colour, place them right sides together, and sew a one centimetre, three eighths of an inch seam allowance on each edge. Remember to back tack at the beginning and the end of the seam. Do exactly the same for the inner band pieces. So for the purposes of this tutorial, my outer is going to be the blue floral and my inner is going to be the white. Now take these pieces to your iron and press them so that the seam sits open like that. So now I'm going to do some top stitching. I'm going to top stitch either side of the seam line 5mm, which is just under quarter of an inch, but you can do it whatever width you like. And don't forget that to re don't forget to repeat that on the other piece. So take the circular crown piece in the colour that matches what you are sewing. What we're going to do is we're going to start matching notches. Now around this piece you'll have notches here and opposite, and here and opposite. So. On this band piece here, you are also going to have markings. So I'll just pop a pin in so you can see what we're going to mark to. So one thing about when you sew these hats is that um, cutting is really important because what we have to fit into. So just be very careful when you're cutting that you cut accurately. Right, so when you're ready, we're going to place this inside the upper part, so the shorter curve here, and we're going to match those positions. So 
all I'm going to do is match those that notch there to the notch. I'm going to match the side seam to another notch and repeat it here and here. So we're going to sew this in now using a one centimeter three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Um, you may find it easier to sew with the circular crown piece on top. So just take your time and make sure that those notch positions match. And when you're ready, go ahead and repeat that for the other piece. Now let's work on the brim piece. So take your brim piece and place them right sides together. And we'll sew the outside, then the inside. And go to your iron and press these open. like so. If you're sewing the band insert, now's the time to prepare that for the outer layer before you go any further. To sew the band insert pieces, take the pieces and place them right sides together and we're going to sew these short ends together. One centimeter, three eighths of an inch. Now go to your iron and press these side seams open like so. And on the upper edge, the inside curve, we're going to press this down by one centimeter, three eighths of an inch as well. When you've pressed, this is what it will look like. So take the outside layer, we want the outside layer right side out, and we want to put this inset band right side out as well, and we want to match the side seams, and we want to match the raw edges. And we'll pin that into place. So we'll have notches in the center to match and the side seams will match as well. Okay now I'm going to tack stitch this together and I always find it easier to tack stitch by turning this to the inside. So what I'm going to do is start on a side seam I'm going to stitch a line of tack stitches really close to the edge, the raw edge, so that's um, 3 mil, um, which is, oh, let me work it out, it's half 
of a quarter of an inch. So what's that? An eighth of an inch. Excuse me, I work in metric, not imperial. Um, so I always have to try and transfer those in my mind. So we just put a holding stitch within the seam allowance. Anywhere within the seam allowance is fine. So when you have that held in place, what we're going to do is edge stitch this top folded edge down and you want to stitch it just in from the edge, so literally a pin width from the edge. And take your time, you want it to be nice and straight. Okay, so now you can just continue with the rest of the sewing. Now we're going to work on putting this together. So take the inside part of your brim and come to one edge of the top. So this is the upper curve. And go to your iron and press under by one centimeter, three eighths of an inch. Now this is just going to help us later. This needs to be around three or four inches long, so seven to ten centimeters long. Um, and we're just going to use that to turn our hat through later. So if we, if we do this now, it just helps us out a tad. So when you're ready, take the matching colored piece. So I'm working on the inside now. So here it is, the piece we sewed before. What we're going to do is right sides together. We are going to match this part here. So first of all take a pin and match the seams and in between the seams there are notches to match as well. We're going to sew this together in a one centimeter, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. When we get to this folded edge here, we're going to leave a gap. So the iron mark will help show you where to start and finish. The amount really doesn't matter as long as it's going to be enough to get your hat through. So um, start one side or other of that press line. So as you can see here, I've pressed from just before one of the side seams. So we're just going to sew that together now. Make sure you back tack it. Okay, so I'm coming up on where my press markers, my ironing markers, so I'm just going to stitch off. Okay, so when we're finished, this is what we've got, and we have a gap here to turn. So now we're going to do exactly the same thing on our outer layer, but we're not going to leave a gap on our outer layer.
Now it's time to sew our outer to our inner. So take one of these pieces and turn them inside out and then we're going to place these so they're right sides together. And just like we did before, we're going to match the seams and we're going to match the notches in the centre of the seams. Now we're going to sew the hat together um, through the outside, the larger part of the brim. Now this is patterned for one centimeter three eighths of an inch, but you may find um, you get a better result at six mil quarter of an inch. So it's entirely up to you. Um, I'm going to sew it at one centimeter. Come to the inside piece and where you pressed under, turn the hat through that area. Make sure you push the seam all the way to the outside and we're going to do some top stitching. Now you can top stitch this at whatever width you choose. I personally feel that 6mm, um, 5mm, quarter of an inch looks best, um, but you can do whatever width you prefer. Now for this hat view, I'm just going to do the one row of stitching, but for the next hat view, I will do many layers of stitching to show you the difference. So when you start this, make sure you, um, it's a good idea to start it on one of the um, seam lines and you will have an outside and an inside even though this hat is reversible um, so choose the side that's going to be the outside to be the good side and then just stitch around the edge take your time and just make sure that that seam is pushed out all the way to the very edge So our hat is nearly finished, all that remains is to close the hole here. So there's a couple of options you can have. We pressed that seam before so you'll find it really easy to know where the fold is, but you could hand slip stitch this if you prefer. I don't like using hand stitching if I can possibly avoid it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come along here and make sure the seam is pushed up this way into the body of the hat and then I'm going to take this folded seam and place it directly on top. And what I'm going to do because I'm going to stitch it from the other side is just match those points there and I'm actually going to pin it from the other side so I know where I'm going. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, top stitch this. So make sure, if you can, that all the bulk is pushed up towards the crown. And locate that pin. So not only am I top stitching, I'm going to close the gap at the same time. So just make sure that is all in the correct place. And I'll start on a seam. 
So I'm just going to edge stitch this, which is literally um, a pin width, a millimetre, you know, it's not a lot from that folded edge. So push everything up and start top stitching. So if you're a little bit unsure about your sewing abilities, you can certainly skip this step. It's not really going to hurt it. Um, and you could easily slip stitch um, that opening closed. And that's it. Our hat is finished. If you like the look of multiple rows of top stitching, first of all, choose a side that's going to be um, the outside. It doesn't really matter but top stitching does tend to look better from one side or the other. Um, if you have two different colours, one on the top, one underneath, make sure you put a different coloured bobbin in from your upper thread and make sure you check all your stitch tensions before you begin. So with top stitching for this what we're going to do is sew rows evenly up from the outside. Now you do have to have a pretty good eye when you're doing this. You could use a quilting foot um, that has spaces that can be quite handy too. The main thing I would suggest is choose a seam to start from and start all your top stitching from there so that when you um, cut the threads on and off it's, it's all tidy. Right so what can I tell you about this? All you have to do is, is just basically start um, between one centimeter and 1.2 so that's just under half an inch to half an inch I think looks best you could go as much as 15 mil uh, which I think is 9 sixteenths of an inch but it's really up to you and what you prefer so all we're going to do is make even rows all the way up to here Okay, so I'm just going to jump ahead and finish the rest of those rows. Okay, so here is my stitching finished. Um, as you can tell, I haven't quite gone perfectly enough here, but I'm sure you can take more time and get that working for you beautifully. Um, just be aware if you do do the top stitching, it does tend to end up with sort of a bumpy look. That's just due to tensions, so you do need to check your tensions before you begin. So thanks so much for joining me for the sew along. If you like what you see, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And you could also join my Facebook group for um, information with the latest releases and competitions and giveaways. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy your pattern and I hope to see you again soon.